For the longest time, I was never really interested in the industrial side of EVE. I wasn't overly keen on the concept of sitting in a mining belt shooting asteroids. The concept of building ammunition or ships just didn't really appeal to me personally. And I wanted to go exploring. I wanted to jump into wormholes and find relic and data sites. I wanted to go into abyssal dead spaces and shoot some Triglavians. And then the Air Career program came along and introduced me to gas huffing. And now I am completely completely addicted. Now there's a sentence you can take out of context. Benzie is addicted to huffing gas. Anyway, ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made 100 million isk this morning by huffing gas in a wormhole. It was pretty safe, pretty easy, and the setup wasn't even that difficult either. We're going to be looking both at the venture and the prospect, we'll touch on the skills needed, and ultimately I do strongly recommend you have watched my video on wormhole 1 one before you watch this one. Seriously, if you haven't watched that video first, go watch it. It's vital before we go into this one. Seriously, pause this video, come back, I'll wait. Anyway, if you've watched it already, folks, let's jump right in. Ultimately, gas huffing is fairly similar to mining. You go to the site, you lock onto the thing, and then you target it with your resource extractor. Just this time, instead of shooting rocks with a laser, we're going to be scooping gas with, well, gas scoops. Now, interestingly enough, the venture itself does have bonuses for this. If I open up my ship tree and open up the venture here and put this nice and central, you'll see that mining frigate bonuses here give us a 5% bonus to mining yield and a 5% reduction in gas cloud scoop duration. So the scoops cycle faster and get you that material quicker, right? We do also see here the roll bonus, 100% bonus to gas cloud scoop yield. So the Venture is actually a really good ship for this. It's also ridiculously cheap and really easy to come across. I mean, if you've done the career agent missions, you've probably got two or three Ventures already sticking around. And heck, if you fly out to the other career agents and do the, uh, the industrial ones there as well, you might end up with a whole plethora of Ventures sitting in your hangar, completely for free, basically, other than obviously the time it took you to do those missions. And Ventures are cheap. If one gets destroyed, you can just fit up another one, right? Now, for the purposes of today's video, I want to show ninja huffing, or more accurately, what's referred to as Jedi huffing. Yeah, we'll get into the terminology in just a moment. And for this, you do kind of need a prospect, and you'll see why later when it comes to the footage section. So, note that we're going to be taking a look at the prospect, but the venture can work too. Ultimately, if you've watched my video on Wormhole 101, which you should have done, you'll have seen how to go into a wormhole safely, how to locate a gas site, and then basically that's all you need to do. That's like finding an asteroid belt and you just lock on an orbit and away you go. That's kind of enough information, right, to go gas huffing. What you need to do is just make sure you've got some gas cloud scoops fitted to your ship, not mining lasers, of course. Now, like the Venture, the Prospect only has two uh, turret slots that you can put these in. It's also worth noting that the Prospect itself has no additional bonuses. Like the Venture, we've got a 5% reduction in gas cloud scoop duration. We've got the 100% bonus to gas cloud scoop yield, and there are no other gas bonuses on here. So why do I recommend this? Well, it's because of this one here. 5% reduction in ship signature radius, plus the ability to fit the cloaking devices. Oh boy, that's our big one right here, which is why the fit I'm using is using the two gas cloud scoops in the high slot with a covert ops cloaking device too. Train into cloaking. If you're doing this, you're going into wormholes. If someone does scan you down, you want to be able to wrap it away to a safe point, drop your cloak on, and then just laugh as they are utterly unable to find you. Now, because of the nature of Jedi huffing, which is essentially, we're going to completely ignore the fact that there are rats in some of these belts. We're not going to worry about having to pull out drones and try and shoot stuff, because good luck using two basic hobgoblins to take out a, a whole f swarm of sleeper ships, for example. That's not going to happen. What the prospect does is allows us to just completely ignore that they're even there. We put on a nice fast afterburner. You can go for a micro warp drive. I prefer an afterburner personally, but some people recommend the micro warp drive for getting between a couple of clouds if you have to. I rather set bookmarks and warp in and out. I think that's safer. And the afterburner allows me to speed tank quite nicely because here with only three levels of uh, the 
uh, skill for the prospect expedition frigates, I'm down to 34 meters of signature radius. And every level of expedition frigate that I train up higher than this is a further 5% reduction, making you a smaller and smaller target. I can go over 2000 meters per second with that afterburner two on, and I'm just not getting hit by anything. If I do get hit, it's very, very minor because of how application works. That's why we have a shield hardener here, a multi-spectrum shield hardener, and a small shield booster just to top things up. For the low slots, I've gone for a capacitor flux coil, two of those just to keep the capacitor nice and in order. We've gone for an overdrive injector system so that we move that little bit faster and a damage control just to help absorb any damage we do happen to take, though we don't really get that much of it to be fair. For the rigs, a couple of small polycarbon engine housings just help us you know, navigate a little bit faster as well, keep that top speed with good orbits. Nice and simple, straightforward fit, nothing crazy here, nothing off the wall. If you are going gas huffing an adventure, again, just use your standard mining fit. Do try and put a cloak on if you have one and just swap out your lasers for gas scoops. It's that simple. Now, some people do like to take the Covert Ops cloak um, off and put scan probes on temporarily. For me, I tend to go in with a secondary ship, something like a probe, scan down the sites I need, bookmark them, come back, grab the prospect, and then fly out. Some people will just use something like a, uh, a mobile unit, um, drop that in space and swap the fittings there. But I found I couldn't quite fit everything in my cargo hold as I needed to, and I'm quite happy just setting the bookmarks, jumping in and jumping back out. Now, as to the skills required for this, we're going to go into the skill menu, and if we go to resource processing, then the first thing you're going to need, of course, is gas cloud harvesting. This is vital. You cannot fit gas scoops without having this skill trained at least to one. If you have gas cloud harvesting at one, you can fit one scoop. If you have gas cloud harvesting at two, you can fit two scoops. It's an additional scoop per level. Now, why do I therefore want to take this above level two? Because I've only got two turret slots, right? Well, simply if we go into show info here and go to required four, you'll see that if we want to have the gas cloud scoop twos, yeah, we need to train this all the way up to level five. And these have double the yield of the standard gas scoops. You want these things on the ship. Get it to two at minimum so that you can have two of those scoops equipped to your ship, but then go all the way up to five to make sure that you get uh, the gas cloud scoop twos fitted to the ship. Obviously, the faster you can get your ship going as well, the better. You are going to want to obviously have navigation skills, afterburner skills, that kind of thing. Probably some minor hull skills and things like that just to keep you moving. But again, if you've been training into the venture, you probably have a decent amount of those already. Just don't worry about drone skills because the prospect doesn't have any. You can also go for gas decompression efficiency. It doesn't help us when mining the gas, when harvesting the gas, huffing the gas even, but it does help us to uh, reprocess that gas that little bit better. It allows us to com compress and sort all of that out. That's an expensive skill to train. It takes a long time. It costs a lot of ISK to buy. I think if you try and buy it straight off the skill book here, it's like 230 million. I managed to pick up a book on the market for 75 million. So once again, do check the market for skill books as well from time to time. But yeah, get that gas cloud harvesting up. Obviously, if we're going to be using the uh, the prospect, you're also going to need to have expedition frigates trained. This skill does have some rather hefty requirements as well. You're gonna need to get your electronic upgrades all the way up to five. CPU management and power grid management at least to two, industry all the way to five, and spaceship command to three. Get those, get the expedition frigate skill trained. Obviously, you're also going to want to have mining frigates trained. But again, if you're coming from going into a venture, if you're coming from a venture, then you're going to have the mining frigate skill already trained. This is because this skill does have a effect on the prospect if we come back out again. Mining Frigate gives you that 5% mining yield and 5% reduction to gas cloud scoop duration. Expedition Frigates gives you a bonus to your mining yield, which makes this better than the venture in going into standard mining belts. Um, but again, we're talking about gas scoops here. The reduction in ship signature radius is huge. Like, I, I recommend getting this at least to three before bothering to undock the darn thing. But if you can get this all the way to five, you are just adding additional safety to its use. But anyway, that's enough about the skills, the ship and the fit itself. Let's showcase this in action, right? 
Now I have jumped ahead here, obviously. If you've watched the Wormhole 101, I've shown you how to already go into wormholes, how to scan down gas sites, so on and so forth. So now here we are actually in the gas site itself. As usual with kind of any of this kind of stuff, you're gonna lock on to the harvestable cloud, which is at the center, orbit as close as you can. 500 meters is what I am currently orbiting here at. Um, activate your afterburner and just make sure you're hovering your mouse over directional scan. Now, the reason I've skipped ahead to this point is if you're looking at the overview, you will have just spotted two sleeper battleships spawn in. Basically, when you start into a gas site like this, a 15 minute timer starts. 15 minutes after that, uh, after you've warped in, a load of sleepers will appear. And in this case, look at them. There's two sleeper uh, battleships coming our way. Sleepless Sentinels, scary looking things. And honestly, they really can be scary. If you are huffing in a venture, this is your indication to get the hell out of there. As these guys come closer, they will lock onto you. They will start doing some rather severe damage to you in an adventure. That's an easy way to be popped. For me here in the prospect though, you can see I'm still scanning with D-Scan just to make sure that no other player has jumped in and is trying to scan me down with probes. I'm keeping an eye on the combat window just in case someone else warps in. I wanna make sure that I can warp off to my exit point as quickly as possible. I'm just nice and prepared. But you'll see as well, I'm keeping nice range on these battleships. I'm not panicking. I'm in a prospect, and the prospect is currently going 2,153 meters per second. I worked that out this morning to be some absolutely ridiculous speed per, you know, kilometers per hour. See if that's still on my phone, actually. What was the calculated speed on that? There we are, 7,750.8 kilometers per hour. That's fast means I'm surprisingly difficult to track for these things, and they're actually taking a long time to even drift towards me. You can see they're still 215 kilometers away. That's because we've got a slight bit of angle going on at the moment with me moving in this orbit. They're trying to shoot at me, but nothing here is gonna happen. I am quite comfortable in this situation. These are never going to range me, and if even if they do range me, the actual damage they do is minimal. In fact, if I skip ahead the footage a bit here, I will showcase on screen now when they did actually range me for all of about 30 seconds and fired off one or two volleys, and the amount of damage they did was pitiful because they're using battleship size weapons up against a ridiculously small target. Remember, I am 34 meters of signature radius right now, which means those missiles do not apply their damage effectively to me. I'm also going at a ridiculous speed. Speed and signature radius, high speed, small signature radius, means those missiles are really going to struggle to apply their damage. And in fact, the one volley they did, literally two cycles of my shield booster, and I was right back up at full health with absolutely fine capacitor like nothing happened i sat here in this entire uh, and like basically tried to get this entire gas cloud i wasn't able to get it in one go i actually filled my cargo hold and that was one million isk estimated price slightly more because i moved a little bit into my standard hold as well out of the mining hold so just over 100 million isk for a little bit under two hours worth of total effort and that was just this one site i actually found two sites in the same system one of which had two clouds this one and then one which only had one cloud I went back and got those as well and I'm sitting on nearly 200 million isks worth of stuff for just under uh, two hours worth of work in total at that point in time two and a half hours I think the whole thing came to and um, for yeah almost 200 million isk Finding the sites takes a bit of time once you're in them I can just sit here and quite happily orbit and just keep huffing and keep using that d-scan making sure that no player is coming down because the battleships themselves do not bother me in fact there are four battleships that do spawn in on this one um, and they just do nothing for me anyway folks that is jedi huffing it is that simple now ultimately i get it it's a little bit scary going into a wormhole where there is no local you don't see local you have to keep descanning i know that some of the sites have unusual and kind of scary names and it's easy to get lost in a wormhole but just remember to set up your breadcrumb trail and you will be absolutely fine nothing can go wrong in uh, in that regard so obviously unless a wormhole collapses behind you but hey i'm trying to encourage you here just make sure that you set up your breadcrumb trail and you should be a able to get in and out without any real worries going on. 
In fact, you can probably see that I'm so not worried about this. I even organized my skills for a bit. I spent some time taking some cool screenshots, like the one that I've probably used for the uh, thumbnail of this particular video. It's a beautiful area, so enjoy it. Just, you know, relax. Keep using your D-scan, make sure that those battleships aren't hitting you, and just follow your breadcrumb trail home when you're done. Otherwise, folks, that's everything. Hope you found this helpful. If you've laughed at this, if you found it useful, please hit like on the video. It massively helps me out. And if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and keep me making content like this, I have a Redbubble merchandise store where you can grab yourself some seriously cool swag and it ships pretty much globally, which is really, really cool, especially for me living out here in Zimbabwe. But I also have a PayPal tip jar and a Patreon that you can pledge to support at as well. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching right the way to the end. Hope it's been helpful. Happy sailing and see you all next time.